So, nice to meet you, Mark. Oh, nice to meet you as well. How are you doing? Fine, and you? Uh, pretty good, pretty good. Not so stressed, no? No, no, I'm just enjoying myself here and uh, I can't wait to, to go on stage. Okay, cool. So, we are here inside the Jabba's building in Utrecht. Mm -hmm. A little change compared to last year because, as you know, as that 600 took place in Den Bosch. Yeah. What do you think about it? I mean, I, uh, I have also played in Den Bosch. It's a, it's a great venue, but uh, Jaarbeurs is uh, the next level. I mean, this is a huge venue. Uh, a lot of big events happen here and it's an honor to play here. Definitely. And as a DJ, you travel a lot. So, what's your favorite club and wave? Ooh, that's a tough question. <laughs> uh, I've played in so many clubs uh, and, and, and festivals. For me, uh, Nature One is a really special festival, but of course, uh, Electronic Family and Estate of Trance as well. I mean, Estate of Trance is the best trance party to play at, so I'm really happy right now that I'm playing here tonight. What do you think about the European public? European? European, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's, uh, I think it, it differs per, per country. I mean, uh, uh, the Dutch are usually waiting a little bit before they're, they're going at it, but if they're going at it, then you have a really nice party. Uh, to be honest, I haven't played France yet, so uh, I can't say much about the crowd. Uh, Italy is great, uh, UK, awesome. Uh, Eastern European countries are doing really well as well, so it's, it's a great crowd. I mean, it, it differs, and... The nice thing about the state of France is that all the different European countries, people come and, and party, and that's a, I think that's a pretty unique, a pretty unique uh, aspect of uh, trans music. It unites people from all over Europe and uh, all over the world, basically. So I can I can't wait to to see who's joining me at my stage. Okay. Welcoming, so. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> so let's talk about trans music. Yeah. It's often said that his music style has evolved for the last few years. What mm -hmm. do you think about it? And if you agree, could you explain us what changes have happened in this kind of music for you? Well, I think it, it's a healthy thing for a music genre to evolve uh, over time because if you keep making the same music over and over, why just not put on the tracks you already know? So uh, I think it's a natural thing. And for me, it's also interesting because as a producer, I don't want to keep producing the same stuff that I already did. I want to try something new and something challenging, something different. And that's what I'm always trying to do and what I'm usually doing as well, I think. So I think right now it's, it's becoming more, uh, a, bit, a bit more low tempo so that it's easy to cross over with uh, progressive house. is a little bit easier and I think it's a good thing, you know. And, uh, and also, but still, the uplifting trends is also making a comeback and yeah. it's great to see these different developments in trans music. Okay. Uh, let's talk about you now. So can you describe yourself in three words? Three words. Yeah. Uh, extremely handsome, no. Uh, <laughs> le let's say, uh, as a producer and DJ, I think I'm uh, versatile. Uh, I'm a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm pretty laid back. Okay. Great. Um, who have you begun to produce trance music? And did anyone inspire you? And who has influenced your career? I think back in the days when I started, I'm from uh, a town called Breda. It's also the hometown of Chesto. Mm -hmm. And his, his uh, first tracks really inspired me a lot to... When I, actually, no, the first one was Ferry Corson, actually. His track, uh, Out of the Blue, System F. Uh, when I heard that for the first time in a club when I was about 16 years old, it, it was something I, I, I was missing in my life. It's, I, I like melodies, some more sophisticated melodies, and also some energy and I never found that in one track so when I heard the track for the first time I knew I wanted to be like a trans DJ producer. Okay. And about which production or remix are you the proudest and why? Ooh, that's a tough that's question as well. Uh, I mean the, your productions are like, like children you can't really pick one but uh, uh, I think that my, my breakthrough Destination 6 under my uh, M6 uh, alias was a uh, it was a big one for me because it's the, the first track that Armin uh, played. Mm -hmm. One of the first track, at least, that I produced that Armin played. And he, made, he named it Tune of the Week as well. So yeah. for me, that was like, uh, what's happening? Armin plays your track in Tune of the Week. It was, yeah. it was, it was, uh, it was, it has a special place in my heart. It's a unique experience. And then after that, uh, some more Tune of the Weeks followed. Uh, and then Requiem, I think, is one of the more recent tracks that uh, got picked up by a lot of DJs. And, uh, when I speak about it. Yeah, I, I just heard it. It was uh, uh, the most played trans track of last year, so that's uh, a really big honor. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite classic trans, trans track? Yeah, Out of the Blue, System F, okay. for sure, yeah. 
And what will be the trend track of last year for you? Um, well, for myself it was Requiem, but for other people, uh, Apache, Fisherman and Hawkins was a really good one. And also the, I really like the, the Protoculture remix of uh, Armin's track, uh, Beautiful Life. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Requiem was one of the trends track, which was, which was the, much, the most uh, played in 2013. Yes. So, where did you get the inspiration from? Uh, actually, I started with uh, the choir. In, in the first version of the track, actually, the break was uh, like an, uh, a classic choir, but uh, after some thinking about it, I just changed, uh, changed that a little bit, but that was the, the, the start-off point. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think I got the main inspiration from uh, a classical uh, opera uh, called uh, really? Carmina Burana. It's uh, O Fortuna. It's, uh, it's a pretty famous uh, track, and I wanted to do something similar, and then the rest just evolved naturally. Okay. So, 2013 was a great musical year for you. And what are the personal changes that appeared in your life during this year? Well, I don't see uh, my own bed as much as I used to. I'm uh, traveling a lot, uh, DJing all over the world, and uh, and also uh, I'm doing a lot more interviews with yeah. with the guys like you. And uh, <laughs> I mean, it's there. There's there's a lot of recognition for my music right now. A lot of people uh, come to tell me they appreciate it, and it, it's it's so heartwarming to see people come to you and, and telling you, "Hey, your track means so much to me," and in, in a rough phase of my life, etc. And that's what I want to, you know, try to do with my music. Uh, try to change or change people's lives uh, for the better, you know. And if I can even do that a little bit, you know, I'm a happy guy. That's cool. Um, if we look at your biography, if we take a look at your biography, mm -hmm. it seems that you stay in the background during several years yeah. and taking part of several collaboration. Now with Requiem, you you've taken the center stage. Was it a personal choice? Uh, well, before Requiem, I was uh, involved in ghost production. Yes. Uh, go ghost production. I was producing for a lot of different people, and I was, you know, kind of happy with where I was. But then Requiem happened, and it, you know, it went really big, and suddenly a lot of booking requests came in. And I originally started as a DJ as well before I started producing, so it was only an, a natural uh, uh, yeah. development. So I'm really happy with it, and uh, I'm, I'm really happy with the, you know, the support I'm getting and playing a lot of big festivals right now, and that's a dream come true for me. Um, what are you currently working on, and what are your next projects? Uh, well, I'm, I'm working on like a, a really, really nice remix. I, it has to do something with the event here, yeah. you know, zoom in here. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, I can't say too much about it yet. I already did, but uh, I'm also I also going to premiere uh, tonight uh, a new uh, collaboration I'm working on. I'm not going to say too much about it, but uh, too bad. <laughs> better be sure to tune in. What are your next three important dates? Um, well, I'm gonna. I just got confirmed that I'm going to be playing Electronic Family. At least it's. I mean, it's not 100% yet. Uh, and I'm going to Canada. I can't wait. First time Canada. Uh, Toronto, Montreal. So those are, and I've got an India tour the coming white party, up. No. Hmm? Montreal white party, no. Uh, I don't think it's a white party, okay. but uh, more info will be uh, on, online soon. Uh, I'm also going to be going to uh, India and Italy. So going to be busy few weeks uh, ahead of me. Okay. Um, would you add a word for your French fan? Uh, in yeah, in French? Me, in me, French? Let me no. Think about it. <laughs> Uh, merci pour uh, le support. <laughs> Et, uh, well, I hope, j'espère. Oui. J'espère de uh, go to. Allez, allez en France uh, bientôt. C'est ça. <laughs> Excusez-moi pour uh, le mal français. <laughs> C'est déjà très gentil. Merci beaucoup. Ouais. Right. My pleasure.